Good morning. Uh, welcome to our um, Sunday worship. And before we get into the message, um, I want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day to everyone that's out there. Let's give them uh, an applause uh, for they all, for they deserve the very best. And if you're watching or hearing this next to your mom or mothers of your kids, please give them a hug and remind them how much you love them. I believe we take moms for granted and don't really understand the magnitude of who they are and everything they do. So from the bottom of our hearts, happy Mother's Day. Let us pray. Lord, uh, today is a special day. Uh, it is a day that we celebrate moms oh, all around the world. Uh, we celebrate moms for they are a, a treasure and we, under, we know how much they mean to us, but it's so hard for us to really show that appreciation. I pray, Lord, that um, the moms will feel appreciated Moms will feel loved. And to know um, that we can't function uh, without moms. A family truly would be dysfunctional uh, without moms there. So we thank you for all the moms and everything they've done. And I pray, Father, that as we go through uh, this passage in Proverbs chapter 31, Help us to understand um, what you desire of, of women and moms and, and our wives out there. So we thank you for this time and be with us in your son's name and pray. Amen. The passage for this morning is Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 30. It says this, An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. To heart of her heart, her husband Trust in her, and he will have lack no. He will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchants. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her husband and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands, in, hands to the distaff and her hands hold a spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her hus household are clothed in scarlet. She makes her bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits upon, sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done exceedingly, excellently, but you surpass them all. The charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. What is Mother's Day? Why do we only celebrate or acknowledge them once a month? Being a husband and a father, I believe that we have it easy. And I'm not saying it's easy being a father, or a husband, but compared to what moms do, we have it easier than they do. And this is my confession as a father and a husband. See, moms are to be cherished, 
honored, remembered, and loved. They should not be taken for granted or advantage of. Here's a story I, I found, and it's a story about a brother and a sister who gave their mom a special Mother's Day card. It was actually a card that they had made themselves that morning. Mom read the card out loud. It read, Happy Mother's Day. We hope you have a great Mother's Day. We were going to make you pancakes, but we didn't know how. So we were going to make eggs and bacon, but we couldn't find any. But happy Mother's Day. They shared hugs and kisses. And then the little boy, the brother, said as honestly as he could, So mom, what's for breakfast? This morning, I am hopeful that all of us woke up early enough and made breakfast for our moms or that we will make them a special dinner, that moms don't have to cook today, that moms today, that you deserve rest from working and making food every day. See, today we want to honor moms and honor the Lord for giving to us moms who serve tirelessly, who serve without complaining, who serve unselfishly, who serve with love. We want to acknowledge about how moms serve and how their service to the family is their way of worshiping God. And this is what it says in verses 27 through 30. Verses 10 and 27 through 30, an excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. She looks well to the ways of her husband and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her, her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful. And beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. I'll get to the chase. Moms, when we think about worship, doing laundry does not come to mind. We think about singing and praising God. See, it's very difficult think, to think of worship as cooking meals, driving everyone, everyone everywhere, comforting your kids after they have been disciplined by their father, by their dad. No one would blame you if you didn't correlate those things with worship. But you would agree that worship is not just things we do at church, singing songs or praising God. See, worship is more than that. Worship is relational. Worship is being in a relationship with God walking with God, living out our purpose for our lives and telling him how much we love him. Worship is all about relationships. See, being a mom is all about relationships. In relationships, moms forge the character of their children, teach imp important lessons of life, helping them learn about God always being there. It is moms living out their purpose God has intended, intended for them. Yet, it is very difficult for moms to see their service as worship. They have difficulties not knowing how valued they are. Here's an article, I'm Just a Mother. You are standing in the kitchen in the same sweatpants you went to bed and trying to figure out how to feed the kids from the nothing that is in the fridge. You realize that you have to go to the grocery store and don't know how you can fit one more thing into your day. It seems like such a waste of time. Anybody can go to the grocery store. Anybody can change a diaper. In your heart, you have a desire to do more, to use your gifts and talents. But here you are smearing peanut butter and folding laundry, refereeing fights and wiping noses with a Bible verse thrown in for good measure, you feel insignificant. Moms, do you feel this way? But please listen to how the writer continues. 
It says, but God sees the selfless acts of motherhood as an act of worship, a sacrifice holy and pleasing to him. He knows that nothing else in this world is more important than pouring your life into your children. Your offering, small though it may seem, is exactly what God wants of you. God notices and he breathes into the offering and counts it as worship. Moms, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Moms, you are precious. Moms, please know you are appreciated and no amount of thank you will be enough. Moms, you are valued. You're not insignificant. You are precious than jewel. Moms, I want to encourage you today and help you see your work as worship in selective verses from Proverbs 31, 10 through 30. And the first thing I want to help you see is how you honor God through your service. Moms honor God through their service. It, in verses 15 and 20, it says, She rises and while it is yet night and provides food for her husband and portions for her maidens, she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. See, moms are usually the first ones up in the family. While everyone is sleeping, snoring, drooling, moms are up and getting everything ready. With a loud voice, yet loving voice, moms tell everyone to get up and get ready. Your breakfast is almost ready. When no one responds, even with a louder voice, lovingly, moms remind them gently to get up, get ready or no breakfast. This is, char just, this is just part of what they do. We probably can't even list everything they do, even though we see her every day. See, moms know everything that's going on in the family. Moms know things even Alexa and Google don't know. Ask Alexa or Google what's on, what's on tap for next week, and they will respond, I do not understand. See, moms, they will tell you, even without going to their phones or calendar, moms are irreplaceable. And that is something we non-moms can come to understand. Moms are the reason why families function as smoothly as they do. See, without moms, it's like trying to drive a car with a flat tire. It will still move, but there will be many bums along the way. And not only does Proverbs 31 show us how moms serve her family, but she, but she also serves those outside of her family. She sees the needs of others. And when reading verse 20, it reminds us, what Jesus said, and they are pretty much making it practical and exemplifying what Jesus said in Matthew 25, 40, when it says, truly I say to you, as you did, did it to me, to one of the least of these, my least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Again, it says, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. They are reaching out to those outside of the family. It becomes a relationship between moms and Jesus Christ, and they're exemplifying it and making it a relationship to others by serving others. See, mom's service never ends. It's within the family, but also it is outside of the family. It is a continual building up of relationships with family members and those outside of the family. It is moms serving, knowing they are serving the Lord. They are setting the example for those around her, forging the character of her children, building on a relationship with the Lord and worshiping God along the way. First thing, how moms honor God is through their service. Second thing, moms honor God through their support. 
through their support. In verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Moms support us in many ways. They usually are the first person we turn to. As a child, when we cry, we cry for our moms. Rarely do we ever cry for our dads. She's the very person that comes to mind. It is because moms have always been there. They were, they were there from the very beginning. They, were, they carried us for nine months. They gave birth to us. They fed us. They changed thousands of diapers. They woke up multiple times a night to nurse us. They were the first person to hold and caress us. There is nothing like mother's relationship with their child, for it is a very special bond. See, verse 26 teaches us how moms support her children, providing them with wisdom and teaching them kindness. We could all argue Agree, I mean, moms support us in so many ways. They support us emotionally and when we are discouraged. They are the ones who takes us to the soccer games, cheering us on. They are our greatest cheerleaders, someone who believes in us when no one else would. They support our dreams. They support us with our future. They encourage us to do great things. I remember when I was younger, and whenever there was a disagreement between my mom and I, she would always tell me, when you get older, you will realize mom was always right. You know what? My mom was always right. I remember moving back, moving to California in 1999. I'm the baby of the family. I had left Chicago and I had a hard time. Never have I left my family or been away from my parents. I was having a hard time being alone. And the only and the person who was there and, and the person that I would talk to for every week was my mom. And we would talk like two hours, two hours a week, or just one call a week, and we would talk two hours. And we would talk about everything and anything. And I would tell her how I miss them, and I miss being around them, how I feel alone. There's nobody around. I came here on my own. And she will constantly hear me, listen to me, and talk to me. And every time she would lovingly encourage me. And every time she listens, she gave me, she gave me many advice. She would encourage me. She would support me. And then she would always remind me that this was the place God wants me to be. She's there to support me, to tell me, hang in there. God wants you to be there. I will not forget those hours of talking, her listening to me, because she showed how much she loved me. Mother's Day is always, has always been hard for the past 22 years now. I haven't spent Mother's Day with my mom for 22 years. And it's hard. It's always just giving her a call and saying, Happy Mother's Day. And I want to encourage those who mothers are just, you're living with your moms, not to take advantage or not to take them for granted. Appreciate them. 
value them. Because once you can't see them every day, you'll look back and, and hopefully there won't be any regrets. Because when I look back, I look at it and say, you know what? I should have told her many other times how much I appreciated her and should have spent more time with her. Because you know what? What moms do, even they're, when they're so busy, for their child, they drop everything and they tend to their child. Moms honor God through their service, support. Third, through their protection. It comes in verses 12 and 21. It says, she does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household, they're clothed in scarlet. Mothers are a real life superhero. Not only does she sacrifice for her children, but she also sacrifices for her husband. You don't need Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, Supergirl, or any other of those so-called superheroes who are not real, who sacrifices for your good. You really, or you already have one who has been there from our birth. It says here in verse 12, she does him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She builds her husband up instead of tearing him down. She speaks kindly. She only speaks of positive things about her husband. She treats her husband well every day of her life. She is someone who the husband can trust. He knows she always does what is right. He never has to worry. He totally trusts her. She is the crown of her husband. Husband, as it says in verse 12, chapter 12 in Proverbs, verse 4, she knows she was created, created to be her husband's helper. In verse 21, it says she's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. Moms plan, moms plan everything out. They think ahead. They're ready to tackle any situation that comes their way. Her family comes first before herself. She will do what is best for her family for her husband, for her children. She'll protect them. She will sacrifice them. She puts herself in the front line, taking everything for the family. She will put forth her best effort every single day so that her family is well prepared for any circumstances or any situations. She's the protector. Moms honor God through their service, support, protection. Lastly, moms honor God because they are blessed. They are blessed. In verses 28 to 30, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Women, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Because of your su service, support, sacrifice, protection, her children will give her respect. Moms train their child in the way they should go. They are taught to fear God and be obedient. Therefore, they're, they call her blessed. Why? Because she has honored God by being the mom she was created to be. The husband looks at all the things she has done and continues to do, admiring all her qualities. A wife who has carried out every duty, every virtue with excellence and looks and, say, and, and praises her. Children and husbands, we are who we are because of our mothers and our wives. We, we will be far off, far worse off without them. We are to call them blessed 
and we are to praise them. We are to compliment our moms at every turn, our wives at every turn turn, to cherish them, to hold them dear, to value them more than jewels, more than anything. In verse 30, it says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Why is a mother's life so incredible? Why is she blessed? Why is she praised? Because she is authentic. There's nothing fake about her. She is authentic. She is one who fears the Lord. She worships the Lord in her heart. And all that she does is seen as worship to the Lord. There is no ounce of selfishness in her service. She walks humbly and with humility. She only fears the Lord and walks faithfully with him. Her greatest relationship is with God, and she does all that she can to reflect that relationship with her family and others. She honors God in all that she does. This morning, I want to say something to all the mother, mothers. I want to stand in the place of every man you have helped in your life and say, thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your support, your sacrifice, and faithfully exemplifying your relationship with the Lord. Moms, we want to say thank you. And hopefully we will be able to say every day, thank you, to bless you, to praise you. Moms, we want to say we love you. And to my wife, Joanne, thank you for helping me. Thank you for being the mother of our kids. I want to tell you that I love you very much. And I owe you more than I can ever repay. To my mom, who will probably be watching this sometime next week, I love you very much. Thank you for loving me even when no one else did. Thank you for believing in me and praying for me every day. To all the mothers out there, thank you. We love you. And truly, happy Mother's Day. Let us pray. Lord, um, Mothers are special. Mothers are dear. They're not insignificant, but they are valued more than gold, silver, any material things. They love us. They sacrifice everything for us. They would drop anything and everything for their child. We thank you that you have given to us moms. And I pray, Father, that, that we will be able to show more appreciation to our moms, that we will help her out, that we will do all that we can in order to show our appreciated appreciation. I pray, Father, we will not be taking her for granted any longer, but that we we will treasure her and that we'll be able to build a relationship, a deep relationship, knowing, knowing that she is wanting to build this deep relationship with us. So we thank you for their service, their support, We thank you for their sacrifice, for their protection. We thank you that they honor you through their service and that show us their relationship with you and by exemplifying you to us. In your son's name I pray, amen.